Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Welcome back to Man City Unplugged, your very own Man City fan channel. Oh, it was such a relief yesterday that we got the victory against Newcastle. You know, 5 nil score line and you would think that it's it was just very easy, but it wasn't that easy. Especially at first, Westwood had the chance. Almost he had an open header, free header on goal and he didn't connect. But, the, but then, you know, like I said yesterday, like we discussed before the match as well, that it, it was it was not a game that we were playing against Newcastle or someone. It was a game against, I mean, the opposition was out of the window in this game. This was a game where we were playing against ourselves, where we were fighting the demons of Real Madrid, where we were, where we were fighting the mental monsters in our head, you know. In the post-match press conference after the match, you know what uh, Rodri said? Rodri said that after that Madrid game, it was really difficult to get get out of bed. It was difficult to wake up the next morning. It was so difficult doing anything. Whatever whatever I did, it it was. I mean, there, there were the thoughts of that Madrid debacle coming back. I guess that would be the same thing for all of the players. So to come back from that in a match where literally you could not lose this because Liverpool presented you with a little bit of an initiative. Now you can't make a mistake in such a high stakes match coming back from that demonic, devastating events that happened in Madrid. It's, it's just salute to the resilience, kudos to the mentality of this group, how this group has stood there for each other, how this group has overcome psychological barriers to get, go there and play with the swagger that we have done. That is not easy. You can have teams scoring 100 points, teams running away with Premier League titles, teams winning Champions League titles. But more than all of that, for me, this, this victory against Newcastle is really memorable. That victory against Spurs after we went out of the Champions League in that dramatic fashion with VAR and stuff. That was one of the most important victories for me, one of the best victories because we, we conquered ourselves mentally. So that is that, that that is something that really defines the resilience of this group, really defines the character. People were saying no character in this group. People were saying weak mentality group, bottlers, all of that after that 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 Madrid match, you just couldn't help but hear everyone, not one was spared, all of the opposition team fans, everyone, all of the pundits were going in on City and for this group to just go and do thing with this kind of a swagger, triumph over Newcastle, it's it's not just a triumph over Newcastle, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a victory over all of the people who doubted us, it, it was a victory over ourselves basically, more than anything else, it was a victory over, over, over the entire world, it was almost the world against you before this match, and that, and, and, and we have conquered all of them, that, that just gives me so much joy. Now let us look at the tactical analysis of the game, of this game. It wasn't that easy because uh, you 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 could actually see that. I mean the the blue and uh, city and and the black black and Newcastle, but you you could actually see Alan Saint Maxim here on on Newcastle's left wing attacking City's right flank. I mean I mean I thought that before the game, wow, th this could just be so difficult because Alan Saint Maxim making these runs in behind, you know Bruno Guimaraes making these runs in behind, Sean Lang stuff running from the midfield. I mean it it was so tense. Even Matt Target, for example, just making those runs from the midfield it, it was just and you know my, my main concern was this thing Alan Zane Maxim he generally played as a striker for example against Liverpool but in this match he was on the left wing so there, there was that intention from AD have to, uh, to to actually target City's uh, right flank because no Kyle Walker no recovery pace Cancelo is fast but he doesn't have the recovery pace of Kyle Walker only few have in the world actually so uh, Alan St. Maxim was constantly trying to be a menace and he did it in the first couple of minutes, first five, ten minutes actually. Chris Wood had a, ha had a good header actually, so... I mean, th this this was actually the idea of uh, Eddie Howe. He thought St. Maxim will be here. Then you could maybe, Chris Wood would, would occupy the position between the two centre backs. Uh, Almiron from this wing would be there and then you would give uh, St. Maxim or Alm Almiron the pass, the crossing opportunity where they could just 
uh, cr cross it into the box where, where they could just cross it somewhat like cross the the ball somewhat like this put the crosses in and Chris Wood would attack it so that that was that that was the tactic that was how we lost the uh, match to Madrid so th th this was the thing crosses from both sides with Chris Wood I, I thought this was the idea behind playing Chris Wood actually I was surprised that Chris Wood played because he, he's in the paciest so why would you play Chris Wood maybe Eddie Howe would wa would have wanted to you know get get those uh, mental games going play those Madrid demons back in the heads of Diaz and Laporte and Cancelo, Zinchenko all the players who were on the pitch by playing those crosses in and that that almost worked in the first five minutes. Chris Wood has had a free header and 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 stuff like that. But then I think the mistake that Eddie Howe did was he was he was just playing the game from uh for, for, from a Newcastle perspective. But what he didn't know was City are City are very good at keeping the ball. Uh, and and sit and when City are at their game, it's not easy to dislodge the position from uh, City. So, so literally, if you take Alm Almeron uh, and uh, Alan Saint Maxim back to their original positions, you could see that this this was the thing that often happened: Sterling high and wide, and then Cancelo inverting. It was almost the same thing on the other wing as well. Real is dragging the centre back with him, full back with him, and. Uh, Zinchenko occupying that inverted fullback position, uh, dragging Almeron in with him. But here something strange happened. Alan St. Maxim was not ready to track back. Almeron was doing a lot of good work to Zinchenko, and yet Zinchenko played very well, uh, negating the threat. I'm, I mean, negating the defensive work of Almeron. But St. Maxim was not at all helping. So this meant that Sterling and Cancelo. Put an overload on the right flank for City, which meant that this fullback of Newcastle had a choice to make: will should he should he stay with Cancelo or should he go with Raheem Sterling? So, and and he he very often he stayed with Cancelo, which meant that Sterling made this run, and then you had someone like a Gundogan come in and occupy this half space with Dubrina coming and occupying this half space with. Uh, he is he is dropping into the midfield and. Uh, deep into the midfield and Rodri coming coming back here. So this meant an overload in the midfield. Now with Hazes, he, you, you rarely saw Hazes in those attacking positions today. It was al almost that Hazes was creating an overload in the midfield, which really meant, and both of our centre-backs were uh here so this this was almost how, how the game uh how, how the game panned out actually so he's just dropping in here you know it created a a, a real overload in the in the midfield to Brian Gundogan he's just and and also and, and also Rodri dropping in so it was almost a 4v3 in the midfield and Chris Wood also wasn't dropping back as much because otherwise there would be no out ball for uh, Newcastle so so it was almost like a 4v3 in the midfield if you, if you could uh, see This, this these were the interest, interesting things over there. It, it was a 4-3 four, four in the mi midfield over there. And Dubraina and Gundogan were constantly making those runs. And Rilis was trying to cut in. So very often it ended up with, you know, Sterling making those darts into the uh, into the box. And then Ken Shallow going out wide. That was how the first goal came, actually. Overload on the left-hand side with Dubraina also putting pressure on the full-back. Dubraina almost dragging the full-back with him. Uh, can Cancelo going in, uh, uh, Cancelo playing the ball out wide to Sterling and then header from uh, Sterling. So goal, this, this, this was how uh, the, the first goal came. But Newcastle were not able to deal with this overload in midfield. In the midfield, never, never, never. There were overloads in the midfield. And due to the positioning of Gabriel Hayes, actually, there, there was overloads out wide. Th these were two places where City really got some real joy. Yes, they played well down that left-hand side and stuff, but most of the joy, most of the technicality, the tactics of Pep were these two regions, especially the right flank. The right flank and with Alan St. Maxim not helping out as much, Newcastle were defending with 10 men all through the match. And you, you could literally see Dubraina making those overlaps, runs. Ster can shallow sterling so it was almost a 3v3 sometimes 3v2 at the back for the center backs so 
so that 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 was how the game panned out and once the second goal went in newcastle just knew it city were just you know we were playing with swagger we were playing with control we were playing with passion purpose everything newcastle's heads just dropped and really the four and five i, I think personally four and five are the sucker blow for for liverpool because fourth goal went in at 90 minutes and the fifth goal went in at 90 plus 3 minutes so th- that means two more goals to the goal difference so plus four goals so 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 I really do think that the last two goals were sucker punch but the purpose especially the runs made by raheem sterling the runs made by raheem sterling his constant switching of flanks his taking on his full back mat target and and stuff like that those things were fantastic and willis came into his forward willis was often out wide but then willis it really did some interesting things he got the ball here then he played the ball here sometimes this is something i mean generally we have seen willis play the ball here back to zinchenko but now he was playing the ball to dubraina and then dubraina was making the run into this position willis was going here and then Dubraina then playing one to it Grealish Dubraina running into this position that was fantastic that was a fluidity you know which um we, we didn't see from Grealish all through this while and 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 that that's what Grealish showed when Grealish Dubraina all of these forward and all of these people are in form it results in goals like the fourth uh, fifth goal you could see that was just fluid no defense in the world is stopping that so this was a, this this was a match which was a test of a mentality or personality i thought tactics go out of the window and everything but we we played with great personality we exploited the tactics of newcastle mercilessly remember liverpool played this newcastle team and they found difficult to break them down i think what they they won with 1-0 or something and here it's the, just the same newcastle team a week back i mean a, a week forward and we thrashed them 5-0 so Uh, it's a, it's a fantastic victory just for the moral boost and everything okay ruben diaz is out for the rest of the season but we will we'll see how we cope with it three more matches to go guys three more finals to play so let us see how it goes anyway just enjoy the weekend take care and see you all